Okay, uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Good, uh, good afternoon, and maybe good morning to someone you know, uh, internationally. Uh, welcome to the, uh, this uh, our session, which will focus on the Master of Science Robotic Program. Okay, uh, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, four speakers uh, for this session. Uh, uh, I will give a, a brief introduction about our department. And uh, uh, Professor Zhou is uh, the, our program manager. Will introduce you the some detail about the robotic program, and then I will invite Professor Marcel Ang, who is uh, the NUS Advanced Robotic Center director, and uh, who can share with you more detail about the robotic research. And finally, I have one uh, student working uh, uh, who is a Master of Science Mechanical Engineering uh, student who is the actually working a project in the ARC center. So he can also share with you about his experience on the uh, research in the robotics. So uh, without further ado, and uh, I, will con I will start a brief introduction about our department. So uh, my name is Zeng Taiyang. I'm a deputy head of graduate program at the department, uh, take care of the graduate study uh, of all the programs. So uh, a short introduction about our department. So our department uh, uh, actually is the largest one in terms of student number. So as you can see, we have about 1,008 uh, students, uh, among which 25%, uh, about 25% are graduate students, include PhD, Master of Engineering, Master of Science, and Engineering Doctor. All right. Uh, so uh, our staff uh, actually have uh, uh, 60 plus uh, uh, professors, uh, uh, associate professor or assistant professor. Uh, in the three divisions, um, uh, mechanics and control, uh, uh, you know, applied mechanics, control and mechatronics. Uh, professor Marcelo is from the control uh, group. Uh, professor Zhou is from applied mechanics group. Uh, manufacturer and the materials, uh, I myself are from materials. And also we have a third division, which is thermal fluid, include the fluid mechanics and the thermal systems. Uh, we have a 14 uh, teaching and research labs, uh, as you can see, cover quite wide range of mechanical engineering from acoustic, mechanics, material, manufacture, microsystem, control, mechatronics, robotics, dynamics and design, and energy, fluid mechanics, and so on. You can look more detail in our website, which uh, covers more detail about our research. So the vision and the mission of our department actually is try to, uh, you know, educate the student uh, to, to provide, uh, you know, excellence in education, research, and the innovation uh, for the changing world. Uh, our, as I said, our research direction cover very wide spectrums. Uh, as you can see here, a lot of uh, research with the robot, and uh, a lot of also we have a you know traditional computational fluid mechanics. We also have a you know a lot of data driven based re uh, research, uh, and uh, manufacture. We have a traditional manufacturer, additive manufacturer, three D printing, industry four point zero, and so forth. So uh, our research. Uh, or our course provide us very wide, okay? Uh, the research funding in the department have almost 50 million, uh, which about two thirds are from external grant, okay? So our professor, uh, you know, carry the research in the, in the area I just described. Uh, our NUS, uh, you know, education is a very important part of NUS uh, society. Our education philosophy is quite long, but the, the important thing is we want the student in question minded, uh, engaged in the rigorous inquiry and uh, beyond the discipline border. Okay. And uh, the student should be a, res a responsible member for the society, a global citizen, and be able to communicate with others. So that's uh, quite important for, for us. Our experience, not only in the classroom, actually beyond the classroom, we have a lot of opportunities. Uh, our undergraduate program are four years uh, with uh, uh, accredited by the Engineering Accreditation Board of Singapore. We have four uh, optional uh, specialization for undergraduate study. Uh, and the graduate program, we have a research-based program, which we already talked more detail at four, o'clock today, 
And uh, uh, Master of Science, we have two programs, Mechanical Engineering, we talked about the last hour. And uh, this hour, we will focus on the robotic MSE. And this program uh, will be launched in January 2023. And the application will start uh, just in a few weeks time. Okay. Uh, uh, just a little bit about the ranking. Our department are ranked uh, uh, on the ninth uh, uh, in the mechanical, aeronautical, and the manufacturer engineering uh, subject. Uh, uh, also, here is a little bit about the, the NUS campus. Uh, we, are, we are just uh, the 10 minutes walk from the sea. And uh, within the NUS, actually, you can take the shuttle bus. And here is some, some picture uh, you know, for, for the NUS. Here is our engineering block. And th this is, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you oversee it from the engin engineering block. Uh, and here is all the engineering building. Uh, this is our uh, sport field. And here is the swimming uh, rooftop swimming pool at U-Town. And also our central library and, uh, and, and also our you know, campus. Uh, so uh, if you if you can join NUS, uh, you will have a, a you know a lot of time to enjoy all those uh, uh, facilities. So here is what I'm going to uh, share you about the department uh, the department. So now I will hand over to Prof Joe, uh, who will uh, uh, you know uh, talk about more detail about the uh, about the uh, program uh, robotic program. Yeah, Prof Joe, please. Thank you. Uh, so I will uh, talk a little bit about uh, the uh, MSc Robotics program. As Prof. Chen already mentioned, so this is a, a new program and it's going to launch uh, next year, starting from next year, January. So application period, application will start uh, in just a few weeks time. So if you're interested in this, pay attention to our website and uh, also note for the uh, application deadlines. So the first is why MSc Robotics program. So uh, as you might already aware that robotics is one of the growing sector internationally. So robotics is catch a lot of attention in recent years. And uh, according to US Bureau of Labor uh, Statistics, the growth, uh, you know, the growth, annual growth in the robotic engineer job market is uh, almost close to 10%. So uh, in, additionally, uh, in Singapore, uh, robotics is also identified by the government as one of the important uh, uh, areas for economic growth, for example, uh, industry 4.0 and uh, digital uh, economics. And these are all requires the uh, robotics. Now, if you, if you look at uh, the number of robots in Singapore, and uh, you will see that uh, we probably is right, ranked the second in number of uh, manufacturing a number of robots in, in, uh, in this area. Although Singapore is pretty small, but the number of robots in, uh, in, in Singapore is actually quite large. And uh, so the aim is to, aim of this MSc robotics program is to provide students with advanced training beyond the bachelor level to prepare the students for the much needed manpower for the robotics industry. So that's the purpose of this program. And uh, uh, so now I'm move on to a little bit about uh, the color column structure. So uh, for this robotic crop uh, program, so we will have a core modules. So uh, the core modules was, uh, you know, uh, from these uh, five modules, these are the core modules, and uh, these core modules provides the uh, sensing, perception, reasoning, recognition, and actuation for the robots. So if you look at any robotic uh, applications or any, any robots, and you will see that uh, the robots will typically perceive the information from environment and process the information using AI or artificial intelligent machine learning algorithms and feedback to the environment through actuation. So we will provide you with all necessary knowledge in these three areas. And that's considered fundamental to the uh, robotics technology. And the modules, as I already said, these are the core modules. So every student need to go through these modules. And these modules are robotic, robot, robot kinematics, robot dynamics and control, material sensors act actuators and fabrication for the robots and robotic vision and artificial intelligence. 
as well as the robotic projects. So these are the fundamental modules that provide you with the necessary knowledge in sensing, reasoning, and actuation for the robots. And then we also have uh, 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 a range of modules uh, from the elective, elective module basket. And these are, you know, have, uh, you know, altogether 16 modules. And these 16 modules can be, you can see that uh, it covers a large area of robotic applications as well as robotic uh, technologies. For example, if you look at the robotics applications, you know, you uh, have a autonomous mobile robots Robotics for healthcare, uh, you know, social robots, uh, medical robots. So these are the, all the robotics applications. And we also cover the advanced robotics technology, for example, machine learning in robotics, uh, you know, advanced robotic mechanics and control, and uh, human robots interface and all these things. So these are the detailed cost structures. And certainly we'll also provide the opportunity to work with professors and work with the industry for the robotic project. Okay, so now here is an overview of the robotics program. As I mentioned, the core modules will basically cover the uh, uh, necessary fundamental knowledge of robotics in terms of sensing, perception, reasoning, recognition, and actuation. And on top of these uh, top mo uh, core modules and uh, a number of elective modules are built and they can be classified as horizontally, the advanced robotic technology and vertically, but like, you know, robot applications. And we want our students through this training to understand the mathematical models, uh, AI, machine learning, and uh, all these uh, focus on the robotics. And we also want uh, uh, our students to have the ability to analyze and synthesize the real robot applications. And uh, uh, so the graduation requirements for this program uh, is again, you will need to obtain 40 MCs, uh, you know, equivalent to about 10 modules and with a minimum CAP of uh, 3.0. So uh, at NUS, uh, the CAP of 3.0 is equivalent to a grade of B minus. And this 40 mod MCs must be comprised of the following. So the core modules, which is already 16 MCs, and uh, then you can choose any four, any, uh, sorry, any six uh, elective modules from the uh, elective module basket, and this will be equivalent to 24 MCs. So 24 MCs plus uh, 16 MC core modules that will gives you uh, altogether 40 MCs for the graduation requirements, and you have to reach a minimum CAP of 3.0. And the candidature can be uh, flexible, and uh, uh, you know, for full-time students, the minimum, uh, you know, minimum span for the uh, for this course is one year, and maximum is two years. And for part-time students, the minimum span is two years, and the uh, maximum span is four years. So after this program, we want the students to you know, successfully land a job in the various uh, industries related to the robot, robot and the robotic technologies. For example, we want the students to find the engineer, engineers and technical officers in uh, high-tech companies that are working on the robots and robot design and robot applications. And students might also have the opportunity to, you know, find job in technical uh, innovation management and assessment, uh, help the company to map out the, the, the technology maps for robotics and robotic applications. And you can also land job in the technical sales and services for uh, robotic companies. And uh, uh, you can also be professional users of the robots, apply the robotic technology to various areas of industry. For example, uh, you know, manufacturing, industrial robots, uh, biomedical robots, and even, you know, house cleaning, those are also, you know, uh, robots applications. And certainly this also, uh, you know, the, the employment opportunities also should include that you probably want to take a PhD pass and uh, working, uh, you know, uh, doing a PhD uh, further centered on the robotic technology. And the admission requirements is that we welcome the bachelor's degrees in, uh, in these areas, like all areas of engineering, because robotics is multidisciplinary area. So we, we recognize that. So we welcome all, uh, you know, 
BNGs in uh, engineering, mathematics, physics, and computer science to apply. And uh, uh, so with at least the NUS equivalent honors degree, uh, you know, from you know, various renowned universities. And applicants who does not meet these requirements, as I already said, is considered case by case. And we will look at your experience, working experience, as well as the scores of your study. And we will, again, have two intakes per year, August intake and January intake. So for the January intake, the application period has already uh, stated that uh, it will be open soon. And application starts from uh, 15th of July to 31st of August. And uh, for those whose, uh, uh, whose course are not learned uh, in English, uh, then the English requirements is required and you need to submit the TOEFL scores or IELTS scores. Uh, and uh, uh, the tuition fee is again, the program based. So it's based on the uh, program. Uh, so this is the tuition fee for the, uh, for the upcoming academic year of 2022 and 2023, and which is 58.8 uh, 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 thousand inclusive GSD. So you can find the more details in our website. And uh, uh, so if you want to contact uh, regarding the program and you can contact Mr. Lee Meng Kyu, uh, who is uh, uh, in charge of all these uh, application uh, related to the MSc robotics. So that's all for my presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post in the uh, chat session. We will, start, we, will, we will try to answer all your questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Guan Ya. And uh, now I'd like to invite uh, Professor Masengo Ang, and who is the director of uh, Advanced Robotic Center at NUS, uh, you know, to talk about uh, the, 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 the robotic research at uh, NUS. Yeah. Uh, Masengo, all yours. Okay. Thank you, Kai Yang. Uh, good afternoon or hello, everybody. I'm very happy to share with you robotic science and technology and how MSc Robotics really fits into it and prepares you for this in the future. Right. So let me start with looking at the impact of robotics in the world. Let's call that industrial robotics, where robots are inside the factory or factory automation. The human is outside. Uh, the robot is inside the cage for safety reasons. This has been very effective. It has been working. But the bigger impact of robotics is moving robots out of this factory to everyday life. We are at the moment of great opportunities from the factory in the last 30 years, three decades, we've seen robots inside our human body. This is operating on an organ where the doctor is outside the human body, almost like playing games, but he's controlling these two instruments. We have the hybrid assist limb. This is a primitive form of Iron Man a wearable robot, uh, the, the robotic vacuum cleaner inside our home, the human inside the robot, a self-driving car, and the robot interacting with the human in a socially uh, nice way, right? For social interaction. So all these arrows, this moment of great opportunities, there's one commonality. It's really the centered, human-centered nature of robotics where the robot is the tool the best tool for humans to use to improve our daily lives, right? So the folk, why do we have this MSc in robotics? Because why do it now? Because of industry feedback. And we are at the tipping point, which is the autonomous vehicle technology. I remember sometime in 2013, when we deployed our autonomous vehicle in the Japanese and Chinese gardens, and other public places in Singapore where we give people mobility on demand. And that created a lot of interest in bringing the robot out of the factory, the car into everyday life, which is public roads, public spaces, right? And so that is a tipping point, 2013. And we have a few startups that came from our group. Uh, Newtonomy is one of them that was started in 2014. And in 2017, it was bought over by Delphi for US $450 million. We're very happy. 
and after and they paid that in cash within two months. And after that, in more recently, Motional came in, was created, and that is a joint venture with Hyundai uh, in Singapore, and that's worth four billion US dollars. Right. So the industry feedback came together. A lot of interest now in bringing robots out of the factory. And there have been, at the same time, advances in machine learning and in robotic science and technology, specifically in soft robotics, right? And um, there is a really a good multidisciplinary training opportunity, right, in robotics at the master's level. We did talk about the undergraduate level, but we think it's the master's level is more appropriate, building upon the fundamentals in engineering and computer science. In the advances in science, uh, in our meeting today is Professor Cecilia Lasky, and she's a very well-known expert in soft robotics, a new field that you will also learn in this MSc program. So the target is everyday robotics. By the way, Cecilia is also in the meeting. Huh? You can chat with her during the Q&A. Bringing from left to right, left is structured environment, human robot is separated, two keywords and how to bring it to our shopping malls, our hospital beds, our bedrooms, living room, our grocery aisles, where it's unstructured human-robot interaction. And you can see the work on autonomous vehicle is really a big step towards this, right? How to move from factories designed for robots to robots using spaces designed for human beings. And the ultimate machine is a robot. It must have mobility. It must be able to move around. It must have an arm to manipulate things. The vehicles I uh, that we work is just a base moving around, but if you can put an arm. And this mobile manipulator must have perception and feeling, must understand the environment to be able to work safely with humans in unstructured environments. Many intelligence is required, a low level like reflex action and high level where you have more strategic thinking and higher level decision making. So the gaps are we need a better body, a better mind for intelligence, and how with these first two bullets, how this robot can be the best tool for the human, how do the human tell the robot what to do, how the robot asks for help from the human, and vice versa as the robot and human learn better and better to work together. Right, so these are two questions. What is the right level of autonomy and how to collaborate? And these are some examples of soft robots, soft uh, fingers, right? The upper right is, they all, the upper right is made of silicon with some internal structure with air pneumatics powering it, but it's kind of stupid in a way, right? Because it's mechanically doing that all the time, but by design, it's intelligent. Right up lower right is small little air pouches. The lower left is a 3D printed uh, material made of thermoplastic or urethane. All of them are driven by air. Uh, mobility is another example. Something we take for granted is our swivel chair, right? And this is the wheels in our swivel chair. If I put one motor here and one motor here, perhaps we can have vehicles that move in an omnidirectional way. Here in this video, yeah, we have four motors, two sets of wheels, and the other two are passive. Imagine if your car is like this, then parallel parking will be so easy, right? So this is a better mechanics, right, for the robot. Now let's go to intelligence. I said low level and high level intelligence. There are always four things happening in an intelligent behavior. First is understanding the environment through sensing. Number two, planning what to do. After you understand what's going on in the environment, you have to plan your actions. That's number two. Then after that, you have to execute your plan, right? Execute what is your plan, execute it well. And after that, you go back and learn to execute better, learn to plan better, learn to sense better. It's similar to how humans learn, right? Once upon a time when we were born, we don't know how to walk. We plan how to walk. When we're one year old, we fall down because we didn't execute our plan well, or maybe our plan is bad, but we executed a bad plan well, but we still fall. 
So maybe we should do a better planning. Maybe we should do a better execution. Or maybe the floor, we didn't sense properly. We thought it's not slippery, but a shiny floor is actually slippery. So we continuously learn to. So there's always feedback happening all the time, right? So we need to give this awareness, this intelligence to the robot too. That is a better brain. Now, this can be in the lowest level or can be the highest level. Let's look at that in more detail. Here is a typical uh, architecture of a robot. This is the lower le lowest level, it's reflex action, I will call it, where the robot uses only internal states, internal, right? Internal states to control. It's like the human body. If we're the robot, I know I'm sitting down without opening my eyes because I feel my internal states of my joints. I know my hand is like this. I know I'm raising my hand. If I can want to draw a straight line, I move horizontally. I can imagine my tip of my finger moving straight, right? Without opening my eyes. That's doing uh, control. That's doing all these four things, but using only internal state. The next level, that's why it's hierarchical, using external state where we have external sensing. And in external sensing, I open my eyes. Let's say my example, I want to draw a straight line. I film internally, but when I open my eyes, I can draw the line better, right? I can sign my name even with my eyes closed, but with my eyes open, my penmanship would be better, right? And you can also have higher level intelligence coming here. So it's always different levels of intelligence happen simultaneously. Typically the lowest level has happens at the fastest rate followed by slower rate. And this is all synchronous, happens all the time, but in the higher level, they can be asynchronous, right? Where the task is. For example, the self-driving vehicle, when do we plan the path to go from Singapore, our university to Changi Airport, for example? We don't plan it all the time, right? It's asynchronous. Once we plan, we execute it, right? But if there's a roadblock or a traffic jam, we need to replan as when it's needed. And that is typically re, re, uh, represented all these levels by computers. One is a microcontroller doing the low level and one is a personal computer, higher level computer here and the highest level you can even put it on the cloud, right? So there are many levels of intelligence. That's why it's hierarchical, right? So the MSC as uh, Guangya and Kayang mentioned is already like this. This is really to prepare you on answering these three questions, right? the three topics, a better body in terms of hardware, including soft robotics, a better brain, these levels of intelligence hierarchically, and elective to specialize, right? And these are the list of modules that already Guangya has showed you. But let me emphasize core means mandatory. You will have to do a mandatory project work for those of you who are really like hands-on building things, you have the option of doing another project as an elective. So that's also possible. But in addition to this elective listed here, you can have two more electives, which is consists of eight MCs because each elective is typically four MCs that's outside this list. So this gives us flexibility uh, for you, gives you flexibility to take something that you really like, but it's not in this list, maybe in computer science department or electrical engineering, biomedical or industrial engineering department. So that I will spend another 10 minutes to show you some of the videos of our work. This is a self-driving vehicle in the Japanese and Chinese gardens. And this is a scooter, a wheelchair we demonstrated in our national gallery, a cool wheelchair, a cool, uh, not so cool wheelchair. The right one is cool, this one left. It's a typical wheelchair we demonstrated in Changi General Hospital. And we also have a full-size car that, uh, so, sorry, let me show again. The full-size car is Scott, it has a name. All our vehicles have names of my first student who worked on it. Scott is shared computer operated transport. It's also autonomous. And the latest version is a big full-size bus. Singapore has already announced in 2022, but most likely 2023 will have autonomous transportation services as public transportation, giving people mobility in Pongol, Tenga, and Jurong, three local districts in Singapore. And this is using this bus 
that we're working with a local company called Singapore Technologies Engineering. Here's a short video on how we do mapping and localization without using GPS. We drive the vehicle around, but the vehicle is a, has a brain as a computer, so the vehicle remembers everything. So the vehicle builds a mental map of the environment, and the vehicle knows how much the wheels are turning, so it corrects the map as it's being built. You can see it, it's adjusting. This is a bird's eye view of an engineering campus in Kent Ridge campus, engineering buildings in Kent Ridge campus. Notice the map is being changed, adjusted. You see that adjustment? Adjustment like this. So we build a map first. It's like you visiting Singapore for the first time, your friend takes you around and you remember everything you see and you remember how many steps you did to see this new place and you don't forget and next time you go to the same place you will say ah i've seen this before that's where i am now right so that's one thing that we're doing because we don't rely on gps because our vehicles also go indoors and this is a project that's funded together with uh, mit uh, in cambridge massachusetts this is our vision of the future where we have autonomous vehicles giving mobility on demand. You book it using Grab, Uber, or Didi, and you want to go to a train station. This is Tawit, my former engineer. He goes to the car and accepts and enters the pin to make sure I'm the one who book it. He's the one to book it. And it needs to go to the train station. It's called multi-class. Why is it called multi-class? Because we take one type of vehicle, which is meant for pedestrian environment, not meant for roads. Right? In this top part of the video, this is where the path is, and you can see how far the sensor sees. This is two times the speed, and this is normal speed. Right? Notice it goes inside building. This is our lecture theater inside our university town. And as it goes in, you can see here, this is our canteen. <laughs> and by the time it goes to another location, Scott will be waiting, right? And Scott is vehicle type two, which is meant for the road environment. You go there. And Scott will be waiting because you only book once. You book two vehicles only once and it's all synchronized. And once you go to the second vehicle, you enter your pin to make sure the one who book it, you can change your destination. And if you don't want to uh, change it, you can just confirm and go, let's go, right? So this, we modify the car, put the computer in the car, put the sensing in the car, put the actuation in the car so it drives itself. This is one example. And this is more recent work uh, where we use machine learning to teach the car how to drive in rain, for example, and detect cars and trucks. Our camera is not waterproof. This is in the central business district of Singapore, the upper right. Uh, left is a, a, a road in Singapore. And on the lower left, since our camera is not waterproof, we put the camera inside the car so you can see it's being disturbed by the wiper, but the beauty of machine learning or, uh, or AI, uh, the machine learning part, even trained on dry weather, it can also work on rainy weather. You can see it can still detect, and this is the rear view mirror. It doesn't get disturbed by the raindrops. It's like what humans are, right? If you see it sunny, no rain, you can tell what's happening. Even when the rain, we somehow can imagine removing the rain and still see the objects as if there is no rain. So that is what we're putting in our vehicle using machine learning. And the lower right is a very difficult problem that any, everybody in the world is still working on, how to get the robot to predict the motion of other vehicles. And the prediction is done by using this, uh, is shown here, uh, the, the boxes that you see earlier, for example, and we, Rewind it a bit. Pay attention to, yeah, yeah, this one. Those gray boxes are the future trajectories 
of the vehicle in front, right? Because we need to predict the future trajectories so we can do a better planning for the action of the vehicle, how to overtake it, for example. Another important thing in human-robot collaboration is the ability to do compliant motion. In other words, if the robot is doing something by itself, if a human disturbs it, no problem. It's inherently safe. For example, this robot is just going left and right, opening his hand, and Isaac, my student, is pushing it around. It behaves like a spring, and we can change the tension of the spring, right? And this is something called compliant motion, a special, special case of impedance control. <clears throat> and we apply that to tasks, also industrial tasks, like polishing and deburring, for example, through compliant motion, we can feel how rough the edges are. This is like you holding this Dremel tool and trying to polish off the edges so it's not sharp, right? And this is very hard for the robot to do, right? Normally, this is done by a human, right? This is in collaboration with Singapore Institute of Manufacturing Technology. You can see these are the burrs that we want to remove. You can see this after the robot passes it, you can see how smooth it is, right? Yeah. So we're very excited with this and we can show you the data we collected showing you how good it is, right? Uh, these are some examples of human robot collaboration. And the video on the left is a robot doing polishing on an aircraft canopy, an aircraft canopy. And then the human is going to come out soon. That's Rodrigo. He, the human will move the base, right? So the base is controlled by the human, but the robot will do the arm motion autonomously, right? Exerting a normal force. So Rodrigo is using a joystick to move the, arm, the base, and the arm will just go up and down, exerting a constant force perpendicular to the surface, the key point here is the geometry of the surface to be polished is unknown, right? It's like you cleaning a, a table or a surface without knowing the shape of the surface, right? We know how to do that quite well. The video on the right is a, an example of a, a way to interact with the robot through, through audio and vision, right? Through language and vision, for example. It detects the hand, and if it opens the hand, that means I need something. And even my student is saying bottle, block, right? And we use machine learning to, uh, to detect the objects and to give uh, the direction. So this is an example of how we combine low-level intelligence in the motion of the robot and high-level intelligence in detecting the block, the bottle, and understanding the voice of Yi Wen, saying, give me the water that it gives. Yeah? And it finds where the, the hand of the robot is. OK, so this is a sample of our research, our current research in our advanced robotic center. And the, the nice thing in our education programs is that all our latest research we combine it with our coursework in our modules, right? So we talk about what is known, but the modules are always linked to current research results. So it's very up-to-date, right? Especially in the advances in machine learning. So thank you very much. I think we have some uh, time for questions or maybe questions later, right? Okay, uh, thank you, Masango. And uh, we can have a question later. On, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I need to leave in five minutes, but question. my colleagues will be yeah. here to answer questions. Yeah. Right? Some of students type the question here and can, we can look at that later on. And yes. uh, we also have a professor, Cecilia Lashi, who is an yes. uh, expert on the uh, soft robotic. Uh, so she can uh, help answer the yeah, question. Yes. So my, next, my email uh, is here. So yeah. please feel free to email me anytime. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Masango. Uh, yeah, you can stop the sharing. So uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, uh, the student, Han Yuhang, and uh, he will give uh, share some of his experience with the uh, Advanced Robotic Center. Yeah, uh, Yuhang, all, all yours. Uh, 
Okay, thank you, Prof. Tsen. And uh, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Han Yuhang. Uh, I just graduated from MSc program uh, two months ago. And uh, uh, so I finished uh, uh, this program just, uh, I think, one year uh, before you guys. And I will uh, still uh, in NUS as a new PhD student uh, and supervised by Prof. Marcelo uh, from August this year. So here I'd like to share some experience uh, of my one year uh, MSc project uh, in the US. Uh, first is uh, uh, courses learning. Uh, so NUX actually offers a, a very broad, very big range of uh, module choices for you guys. And uh, uh, there are some samples that I took the modules in the last year. So this is uh, one course uh, aimed on to learn the development of energy converse, uh, conversion. And uh, we did the detailed analysis of the solar panel deployment in Singapore. Uh, you can see that uh, a great teamwork we have conducted uh, during this module. Uh, here are some other uh, examples of the modules I choose. Uh, so on the bulb is one module called machine vision, and you can learn some uh, basic uh, image processing technologies uh, using some uh, software like MATLAB or some libraries from Python and do the image processing. On the above, uh, sorry, on the below is the one module called linear system. We use the MATLAB Simulate uh, toolkit uh, to develop a closed uh, loop control system and give a step response injury to see the uh, output pattern. So here I'd like to share more about the project I did uh, at, NRC, uh, at ARC. Uh, so uh, the lab I was in is actually a sub lab of ARC, which focus uh, fully on the autonomous vehicle technologies. Uh, these are the master projects. Uh, so in the same year, uh, me and my classmates uh, enrolled. Uh, as you can see, nearly all of the uh, technologies in the autonomous vehicles are included, uh, such as object, object detection, uh, localization and mapping, just like the Prof. Marcelo just mentioned, uh, some uh, perception technologies and uh, uh, past planning. So I want to share more about my per, uh, personal project. So I was doing the uh, simultaneously localization and mapping uh, just like Prof. An, uh, Marcelo just mentioned. And uh, we, uh, the basic task for this technology uh, have two uh, sub goals. One is localization. Uh, we have the sensors and collect the data information from adjacent environment and com combine or compare match the adjacent features in the adjacent frames and derive the overall uh, movement of the robot like the translation and the orientation. Another thing is mapping. Once we got the odometry of uh, our robot, we can combine all the information from each frame and uh, construct the overall map, uh, like the one showed uh, on the right. So I, I did the fusion sensor uh, localization in my project. Uh, you can see this is the device stack I used in my project. Uh, combined with one uh, solid state LiDAR, uh, one uh, stereo camera with built-in IMU. And uh, I, I will not extend the detailed algorithm here, but uh, basically is uh, the inputs are the LiDAR inputs and IMU inputs. And uh, I used the, the so-called uh, iterated Kármán filter technology to fuse the data and get the overall odometry. Uh, this is the demo video. Uh, what truly my project done. So uh, the sensor stack was holding my hand and I can just uh, basically uh, facing to any direction I want to map it. And the algorithm will uh, compare the data from the uh, collected uh, information and we can get the overall trajectory. This trajectory is the actual, uh, the path that I uh, went through. So after the whole round, you can see the uh, overall map was constructed and the effectives was quite uh, satisfied. 
this is a top-down view of the video I just show you. We also did some uh, uh, other uh, experiment of this algorithm. This is these are the super trees and gardens. By the way, by the way, a very famous uh, uh, place for tourists in Singapore. Uh, my project could also be used in some indoor scenery map. This is, is the lab uh, that I did this project. So about the applications, uh, firstly, we can uh, convert the point cloud map here uh, into some uh, triangulation uh, uh, meshes and uh, did some refinement of it. I finally put it into some uh, computer graphics uh, engines like Unreal Engine. And uh, we can uh, do a, a simple uh, car simulation inside this environment. Uh, this is the, the way uh, that from my lab all the way to the uh, canteen of uh, Department of Engineering. Uh, we can also use the road point cloud map for the navigation or localization for uh, autonomous vehicles. This is another project uh, this is uh, autonomous sweeper for the road cleaning. So the uh, localization was done in my point cloud map. Uh, all of the uh, movement are autonomously done. Further, we can uh, uh, still use the same uh, algorithm, but uh, uh, simplify our sensor stack uh, to uh, build it into some uh, mini size and uh, attach it onto some uh, small mobile platform or robot like the Jackal or the Spot. Spot is actually a very famous uh, type of robot dog from Boston Dynamics. Uh, this video shows the self-navigation of Spot. So as you can see, it can avoid the obstacle autonomously and also uh, come over some uh, blocking objects. Okay, that's all the things I want to share you with my project at ARC uh, for, the, uh, for my uh, MNIST SC program. And uh, I'm also very excited to tell you that I will still stay in NUS for my PhD study uh, from August this year. So I really appreciate all the resource and the supervise from uh, NUS from uh, Department of Engineering provided me in the last one year. And, and I'm right, really looking forward for my uh, following four years study here. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. That's all my sharing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Yuhan. And uh, yeah, very inspiring. So uh, Cecilia, uh, do you, have, you want to say something? Okay, so uh, I think the master was well uh, well described by Professor Ang, and uh, I hope that uh, the um, uh, the participants have a flavor of what robotics is today. You have seen this big uh, evolution of robotics from the traditional industrial field where robots are extremely reliable, efficient, and it's a technology that works very very well. And new challenges are today open for us to put these robots at work in our daily life, in many other activities, in addition to the industrial uh, use of robots. So uh, there is a lot to learn, and uh, it's very interesting to learn how a robot works and uh, how you can program it to work or how you can design your own uh, robot for for some applications. So um, I hope you you can be inspired by uh, Professor Ang uh, talks from the experience of the student. You have seen the enthusiasm that he <laughs> communicated uh, um, by describing his uh, his project, and uh, I hope you are uh, in, uh, interested in joining the the master program. Thank you, Cecilia. So uh, yeah, uh, this end uh, all the presentations. So uh, now uh, we we can answer. Uh, you know, if you have some questions, we can we can raise, you can raise the question in the in the chat box, and uh, uh, 
uh, we can answer your questions if uh, we still have time. So we will, as we will end at seven o'clock. Uh, okay, so uh, let me see what question I have. Okay, so there's a question uh, from a student. Uh, he's already in the Sudo, uh, NUSRI Sudo program. Uh, that program is uh, on mechanical engineering, uh, but we allow the student to apply the robotic program, okay? Uh, but uh, uh, there's no promise we will accept it. This all depend on your qualification, okay? So uh, because the pseudo program is associated with mechanical engineering, uh, robotic is a separate program, uh, but it's all hosted by our department, okay? Uh, so uh, here is a question about uh, is, is whether how to apply the project, uh, whether in the robotic or, 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 or uh, ME, um, the, the, when the term start, we will announce the, the project list for the MSC program, uh, for the ME program for in August. Uh, for robotic program, uh, because going to start in January, so the, pro, the, 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 the project has not finalized yet. So those, uh, uh, you know, the project will be, uh, you know, finalized later on by the uh, staff from the robotic center. So that will be, uh, you know, uh, probably doing it uh, maybe uh, sometime later of the year, okay? Because this uh, this program will be uh, start in, officially in January. Any other questions uh, you, uh, you 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 may have? Professor Marcelo's talk is really inspiring. I uh, can tell you know even we under I understand now a lot of uh, about the robot. Otherwise, you know my my thought of robot is all the you know mechanic arms. <laughs> Is there any provision to switch from Master of Science to Master of Engineering after reach NUS if one is into doing thesis? Uh, okay, um, the Master of uh, Science and the Master of Engineering is diff are, di are two different programs. So, so you, you, you really cannot switch, okay? Uh, you have to reapply. Uh, but having said that, the program, uh, 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 you can take the course over. Okay, so the course you study from Master of Science, if you uh, apply the Master of Engineering, you can uh, uh, you can take it over. Okay, so so but the, but it's it's a separate program. You cannot uh, really transfer directly. What are some of the common funding op, uh, op options? Um, the master program uh, are all uh, self funded. Okay, so it's not a, a, a no scholarship offer. But we we did offer some rebate for Singapore and the PR, all right? Uh, so, so that's, that's but uh, uh, you probably can, I mean, you can uh, ask uh, external funding, but uh, internally NUS does not provide any support, okay? Even though I graduated with a Bachelor of Megatronics, I'm more into bionic technology. So I've graduated from this program. Can I work on the, as a, Bionic engineer. Uh, this may be Cecilia. Can you uh, answer? Yeah, there is a little bit of this inside the, the robotics uh, um, master uh, because, of course, the fundamentals are the same. And then in the elective modules, you find some of the applications which are in the, the medical field and uh, they include bionic, uh, bionic engineering, bionic uh, technology. Yes. Okay, uh, I think the, the, the event uh, moderator asked me to close the session. And so uh, uh, asked me to put my email here. So if you have a, any of you have a further questions, you can email me. And uh, if I can answer, I will answer directly. Uh, if, if not, uh, I, will, I will put it, uh, uh, you know, I will get someone to answer. So this is my email address. Uh, I will put it here. So uh, if you have any question, you can uh, answer, uh, you can email me, okay? Uh, uh, because I think the, 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 the event MC want to uh, wrap up of, of, the, of the whole event. So we're, we're forced to close. <laughs> yeah, okay. So thank you for, so thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, uh, Yuhan. And uh, Marcelo has already left. And uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you for all the people attending this uh, uh, session, okay? I hope I can see you, you in NUS soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Thank you for attending. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.